Okay, so today we are going to go over mitosis and meiosis, which is a pain in the butt and the butt when you're studying for biology because it can get very confusing and it's very easy to get them uh, mixed up and I'm going to make these videos and try to make them very, very clear and very understandable uh, for you. So if you have any questions, please feel free to shoot me an email or uh, put it in the comments below in the YouTube. So before we go into the actual mitosis and meiosis, this little short intro video is going to be your basic information and the vocabulary that you're going to need to know that is going to be on the test uh, so you don't get lost and you don't get confused. So first, mitosis itself, mitosis, if you think of my clone, mitosis, my clone, that's going to be your cell division. That's going to be when you take one cell and it divides into two identical cells. So they're cloning each other. So my clone, mitosis. And then meiosis, or some people say meiosis. I say meiosis because it helps me keep them separate. It helps me keep them apart. Me, my parents had to have sex to produce me. So meiosis is all about making the sex cells that, uh, that we use to come together and to make a new person. So meiosis is making the sex cells. Sex cells meaning a sperm or an egg. And that is sort of an exception. Meiosis only happens to the sex cells that we have. What mostly goes on is mitosis. Mitosis is the general rule for everything, and the exception is meiosis. So in cell division, the cell cycle, and I'm using humans as an example because I feel like we can all relate to us a lot better than we could relate to, you know, some bug or some bacteria or something. The cell cycle for cell division, the best way to understand this is to start out with just the basic information that your body has millions of cells. So, duh, right? Your body has millions of cells. They have you can have hair cells, you have skin cells, you have liver cells, you have sex cells. You know, if you're uh, a male, you have sperm cells, um, possibly. And then if you're a female, you might have egg cells. And then I just put etc. because it goes on and on and on. Skin cells, liver cells, heart cells, lung cells, blah, blah, blah. So everything except for the sex cells, all of the rest of the body cells have one set of 23 chromosomes from mom and one set of 23 chromosomes from dad. So that means you have two sets of chromosomes of of the set. I don't want to say the same thing because they're not identical. Like you could have, you know, a gene for blue eyes and a gene for brown eyes. Your mom could have blue eyes. Your dad could have brown eyes. So they might not be identical, but they are homologous. Homologous. And that means that they're similar. They're part of the same. They're part of the same thing. So uh, homologous genes could be homologous for eye color. You know, they might have the two different genes might have one for blue eyes and one for brown eyes. So they're not identical, but they're homologous because they both stand for eye color. So I hope that makes sense. 
So as I was saying, uh, all the body cells, except for the sex cells, all the body cells have one whole set of 23 chromosomes. And this 23 chromosomes, this is just for humans. Other species have different numbers of chromosomes. But for humans, it's 23 chromosomes. A set of 23 chromosomes from mom and a set of 23 chromosomes from dad. So that makes two sets, right? So two sets is going to be called diploid. And that's DI for two. And the way we write this is 2N, and you usually put it in parentheses. So that's the total of 46 chromosomes in each cell. And that's how uh, we get as humans, that's why they say humans have 46 chromosomes. It's actually two sets of 23 chromosomes. One set of 23 chromosomes from mom, one set of 23 chromosomes from dad. But you add those together and you get 46. So, as I said, each cell in the human body, except for the sex cells, so we're just going to give exception to this, but everything else, each cell in the human body has two sets of chromosomes, one from mom, that's 23 chromosomes, one from dad, that's 23 chromosomes, the total is 46, and as I said before, two sets, which is what we have, one set from mom, one set from dad, is called diploid, and it's abbreviated in parentheses 2N. And the di or the dipole, uh, that's from the Greek, that just means two. That's why we have diploid. That just means two, two sets. And the oid is also from Greek, and it just means similar. So two similar sets of chromosomes is diploid. The N, when we say like 2N, when we're abbreviating this 2N, the N just stands for the N number of chromosomes in each set. So 2N would be two sets of however many number of chromosomes this is. Because remember I said humans have 23 chromosomes, but if you have a 2N for like an ape, an ape might have a different number of chromosomes, but that would still be 2N. So the N is just a placeholder for however many chromosomes are in a set in that species. So a human diploid cell has 2N, which is equal to 46 chromosomes. And the reason why I'm giving you all this information before going into mitosis and meiosis is because this is the vocabulary that is used in biology. And if you're sitting there trying to take a test and they're using all this vocabulary on you, you're not going to be able to understand what the question is, even though you're smart and you know how to you know, you know mitosis and meiosis, but you can get confused in the vocabulary, so that's why I'm going over it first. So, now the sex cells, this is the exception, because everything else goes through just mitosis and divides. But the sex cells are a little bit different. Now, what do I mean by sex cells? Sex cells are the specific cells, remember when I went back Let's go back to the picture of the lady. Remember when I had, uh, I was talking about there's hair cells, there's skin cells, there's liver cells. So there's also sex cells and like here's her fallopian tubes and here's her uterus. So, and the egg, the ovary on the fallopian tubes those would be the sex cells, the egg. And with a guy, it would be his sperm. So that's what I mean by sex cells. So the eggs and the sperm cells are not 2N. They are not two sets of 23 chromosomes. They're just one set of chromosomes, of 23 chromosomes, from whichever parent 
uh, has this sex cell. So you have you can have one set of 23 chromosomes in a sperm cell. So that would be your chromosomes from your dad. Or you could have one set of 23 chromosomes in an egg cell. And that would be the chromosomes from your mom. So the sex cells, the egg and sperm cells, only have one set. So that's just N. That's not 2N because 2N means there are two sets. So that's not 2N, it's just N. So N, for humans at least, N equals 23 chromosomes, and that's called haploid. Now remember when I was saying the 2N, the 2N is 46 chromosomes, that's two sets, that's two sets, so that's called diploid. Okay, but we're not dealing with that. We're dealing with one set of 23 chromosomes, so that's called haploid. And hap in Greek means single, so a single set, a single set of 23 chromosomes. And these sex cells, by the way, these eggs and sperm cells are called gametes. So you're going to need to know this word as well, gametes. And a gamete is just a general term that you use to say a sex cell. So you could be talking about an egg, you know, from the female, or you could be talking about sperm from the male. Either one, you can just use the general term gametes for either one. If you want to specify whether or not this gamete is... Uh, an egg cell or a sperm cell, then you would just say egg or sperm. Now the overview of how we are all made is their mom has an egg cell, so remember that's a gamete. Oh, and I have it written right here, these are gametes. So the mom has an egg cell and that's just, that's haploid, because it's just one N, it's one set of 23 chromosomes. And then the dad contributes the sperm, which is also a gamete, and that is also haploid, so it's not two N, that's just an N, and that's 23 chromosomes, so that's one set, one set of 23 chromosomes. So the sperm and the egg get together, and the sperm punctures inside of the egg and spills out all of its chromosomes into the egg's chromosomes and all the chromosomes mix together and that's called fertilization. So now, after fertilization, we have a new entity. We have a fertilized egg. Now that's called a zygote. This is no longer a gamete. The gametes were the egg and the sperm. So now this is no longer a gamete. This is called a zygote, which is a fertilized egg. And since the egg is fertilized, it has one set of 23 chromosomes from dad and one set of 23 chromosomes from mom. So now we're back to diploid. We're not haploid anymore, we're diploid. We're 2N. That's two sets of chromosomes, which totals 46 chromosomes. 23 from mom and 23 from dad. So now we have this fertilized egg, which is called a zygote, and that's 2N, 46 chromosomes. It's a diploid. And then this is going to go through mitosis which is just plain old cell division. This is the, the normal cell division that occurs most of the time. Meiosis is an exception. So this fertilized egg, uh, this zygote, goes through cell division and you end up with two identical daughter cells. And as you can see here, we have one here and one here. This is identical daughter cells. These are identical. 
uh, from the fertilized egg. The fertilized egg uh, makes goes through mitosis, and remember mitosis, my clone. So it clones two uh, cells, which is two in, and it goes through mitosis again. And so each of those two cells clone themselves again, and now you have four. And then it goes through mitosis again. And so each of those four cells clone themselves, and now you have two, four, six, eight. And on and on until there are millions and millions and millions of cells. So going, starting at the top here, I'm continuing from the page before. We've gone through mitosis again and again and again and again and again and again and again. And that gives you millions and millions of these 2N, these diploid cells that are 2N, which, what does that mean again? 2N means two sets of chromosomes, one set from mom, one set from dad. So here is just a string of a whole bunch of cells, of 2N cells that were created from the mitosis. Obviously, these are not millions of cells because I don't have the time to draw all of that, but I drew all these cells up at the top. And then after these cells are finished dividing, they do what's called differentiation. And that means wherever they're at in your body, they kind of look around to see what all the cells are turning into around them and they figure out what kind of cell they're supposed to be as an adult. So like a hair cell, a hair cell is sitting here in your hair and it looks around and it sees that all of the other cells around it are turning into hair cells. So it goes, oh, I must be a hair cell. So when it grows up, it turns into a hair cell as well. Then there's one right here. There's a lung cell. Here's a cell that sits in the middle of your lungs and it's looking around and it's going, well, what should I be when I grow up? Should I be a liver cell or a hair cell or a skin cell or what? And then it looks around and it sees that it is surrounded by lung cells. So it's like, oh, well, I must be a lung cell. So that's what it turns into when it grows up. So that's just a really short, um, simplistic definition of what differentiation is. And we won't go into that too much right now because that really doesn't have too much to do with mitosis and meiosis. I just wanted to give you a big, um, the big picture of how all of this stuff fits in together. Now, the exception to this is, and here's your exception, instead of differentiation, the cells that are going to become gametes, which are the sex cells, you know, the sperm and the egg, they go through mitosis a couple of times, but then they turn into germ cells. They don't turn into liver cells, they don't turn into hair cells, they don't turn into skin cells, they turn into what's called germ cells, which are also diploid because they still have two sets of 23 chromosomes in there, one set from mom, one set from dad. So they're germ cells right now. But then once they reach germ cells, they don't change into anything else. They go through meiosis. Now me, my mom and dad have to have sex to make me. So meiosis, that's the sexual, uh, the sex cells. They go through meiosis to become a sperm or an egg. And um, people that are born male, uh, their germ cells are going to go through meiosis and turn into sperm and become sperm. And people that are born female are going to go through, or identified as female uh, through birth, are going to, when they're cells go through, when their germ cells go through meiosis, they turn into eggs. Now, obviously, there's great um, strides in science and in sexual identity 
and I don't mean to invalidate that or disrespect anybody, but for just the sake of explaining mitosis and meiosis, I'm going to go ahead and use the old school uh, old school vocabulary saying here's your set from mom here's your set from dad a male makes sperm cells a female makes egg cells so I hope that doesn't offend anybody or trigger anybody but I'm just doing it for the fact of simplicity so I can uh, make sure that you understand this and that you can get an A on your test